We welcome all of you here tonight that have gathered together in the name of the Christ. Those who have joined us in live stream, we, we are glad you're here with us also. <clears throat> tonight, this will be the 20th message on the subject of the second coming of Christ. This means we're, we're halfway through this series already. <clears throat> now, the coming of Christ is the blessed hope of the church. <clears throat> and the grace of God uh, by which we're saved teaches men to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world Amen. looking for or anticipating the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what grace does. Amen. Now, if a person isn't looking for Christ's appearing, whatever they say, they don't have grace. Yeah. The person has to come to grips with that. That's yeah. just the way it is. Grace is very faithful to carry out what God has mandated. So the coming of the Lord is a blessed. This is the hope that God has bestowed his blessing upon. The blessed hope of the church. And the glorious, that's Jesus is going to come in all of his glory. He's not going to be disguised. He's not going to come incognito like he did the first time. He was disguised the first time. Nobody knew who he was. Unless he told them. But there's going to be no question about who Jesus is or about his glory or whether he's king or whether he's ruler. He's going to come in all of his glory. It's a glorious appearing of Christ Jesus. Now at that time, every person is going to face the spiritually logical conclusion of their life. Everybody. Everybody's life, whether they know it or not, is headed someplace. There's an objective to every person's life from heaven's point of view and from the earthly point of view, too. There's a reason why people do what they do. Sometimes they don't wear it on their coat sleeve, so you can't see it. There's a reason why people are slothful. There's a reason why people are diligent. Amen. But in the end, everyone's life is going to lead to a certain conclusion. And the day of judgment is going to confirm that it that cannot be contested that that was the conclusion of that kind of life. They made clear. Now let's uh, just take a moment here to clarify what God states is the objective for people in Christ. What's, what's he doing? When he saves a person, what is he doing? What's God's aim? What's his purpose? What's his intention? Yeah. I say this with some degree of shame, but I am persuaded that most Christians don't have any idea that God has a purpose. Uh, yeah. They don't think in that, type of in that type of mode. They think of what they want. Uh, That's what sin does to a person. Right, yeah. Makes you self-centered. Here's some statements now of God's objective for the believer. Now, remember, with our message tonight is on Jesus will bring his reward. He says, I'm coming quickly. That suddenly, without a lot of announcement, <laughs> my reward's with me. I'm going to bring my reward. Yeah. Romans 1.11, Paul captured what God's doing. 
He says, I long to see you. Now, he didn't say that to everybody. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, to Corinth, he didn't say that to Corinth. He said, in fact, I held off seeing you because I didn't want to be too stern. You're so messed up down there in Corinth, I was, uh, I hesitated to come. He says, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to the end yeah. that you may be established. Amen. To the end. It's a purpose. Are you established, would you say? You're in Christ? I mean, are you, are you established? What, what does that mean? It means you can't be moved. Yes. I shall not be moved, we sing. But a lot of people sing that are moved. Established to the end. Any form of Christianity, so-called, that does not leave people established, if they pay attention to it, is false. It's, a, it's, it's not true. Let's state another one. 1 Corinthians 1.8. Who, it's God, will confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of Christ. Oh, oh, oh. Is that what God is doing? Yes. His objective is when Jesus comes, you, there'll be nothing found against you. You say, well, I think, don't think anybody can be in that state. Well, don't make any further comments. Because if any man confesses his sins, God's faithful and just to forgive him his sins and cleanse him from all unrighteousness. Amen. And you can die to uh, go to sleep tonight perfect. Yes. Amen. Morally perfect. Because yes. you're going to have to do this again tomorrow. Uh -huh. yeah. That's his aim. Because when Jesus comes, if you've got blame, you are not to be envied. That's God's target, blameless in the day of Christ. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5. Now the end of the commandment, the end here means objective or purpose or aim. The end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. That is, all pretension is kicked out the door. There is an enormous amount of pretension in Christianity. It's mind-boggling, brethren. You don't have to go far to see it. We don't like it when we see it. We don't exactly enjoy talking about it. But there's an awful lot of pretension, people pretending now, the objective of the commandment is not that you just do what's right. It goes deeper in that. This charity out of a pure heart, you really, you really do love. You really do love God first. You love his word. You love Christ. You love his people. You love his word, his commandments. You love the brethren of Christ. You really do. If you don't, then go to work on it. That's that's yeah. what God that's what God is commanding you for. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And a good conscience. Does your conscience bother you? You have a condemning conscience. It's a terrible thing to have. I've had one. I know. If you have a conscience that condemns you, goads you, at night bothers you, you got to get rid of that. See, how can I do it? The blood of Christ is able to purge your conscience Amen. from dead works to serve the living God. Your past can hound you. Yes. Yeah. But the blood of Christ can make it stop hounding you. Yes. Yeah, that, that's the end of the commandment now. It's a good conscience. Good conscience. One doesn't condemn you. And faith unfeigned. Unfeigned means it's real faith. It's not pretentious faith. It's not an intellectual assent. 
See, some people, when they say faith or believe, what they mean is I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't think it's wrong. But that's, that's, not, that's not believing. Yeah. Believing is I know it's right and I'm going to lean the weight of my soul on it. Yeah. It's uh, like it's an old story, but it's a tightrope walker when the twin towers were still standing. It stretched a cable between the twin towers. It was like, I think, 120 stories up in the air. And a tightrope walker wheeled a wheelbarrow across that cable. He had a special tire on the wheel, wheelbarrow. People cheered, and it was really something. And the story goes, how true it is, I don't know, but the story goes that he asked if they believed he could do that again. Make a trip back. They said, yeah. All right, he says, who volunteered to ride in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> Jesus has asked you to get in the wheelbarrow. Yes, that's, right. that's what believing is. You trust. That's right. Unfeigned. You can't pretend. You know, before you get in that wheelbarrow, you, you, you're not pretending. Uh -huh. All right, now that, not to miss what we're seeing here. That's the aim God is shooting at. Charity out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and faith unfeigned. Here's another, uh, another statement of it in 1 Peter 1, 9. Receiving the end, that means objective, not, not end like terminal point. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Yeah, that's what your faith is about. Faith is not, the purpose of faith isn't so you'll have more money. Yeah, that's right. Amen. The TV moguls tell people this, but they're not telling the truth. That's right. That's right. Amen. See, the end of faith isn't so you'll be able to solve a lot of problems. Yeah. The objective of faith is to save your souls. And Jesus asked a very poignant question one time. He said, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So God's arranged things so you can actually barter with your soul. You can give your life to someone other than God. The end of the commandment is the salvation of your soul, the extrication of your soul from everything sin caused, whether it's guilt Weakness, whatever, is to lift you out of that circumstance. So why do, why I say these things? You say these things because these illustrate to us that every deed there's a conclusion to every kind of act. There's there's something that it works. In this case, we're talking about a reward. Rewards. Brother Judah brought this out. Rewards are not always good. He's going to reward the evildoer. It's not going to be with a blessing. Let's right. look at this concept. Uh, first, our, our texts. The affirmation that when he comes, Jesus comes, he's bringing his reward. Matthew 16, 27 says... The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his works. Here's our text, Revelation 22, 12. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Now, Jesus means this. This is not a fairy tale. When Jesus comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels, and that's how he's coming the next time. Jesus snuck into the world the first time. He's not sneaking in the second. He's coming in all of his glory, the glory of the Father, the glory of the holy angels. That's about all the glory there is, brethren. He's going to give every man according to his works, a reward. My reward, 
my reward's with me to give every man, everybody's going to be involved in it. <clears throat> now, reward equates to wages, we might call it wages, or compensation or payment. Every kind of deed a person does, every kind of word they say, every kind of thought they have, every intention they have, there's a certain compensation that's going to be paid out yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. If it's godly and righteous, it'll be good. If it's not, it won't. Mm -hmm. Be sure of this, a man reaps what he sows. Yeah. Whatever a person sows, that shall he also reap. He makes that point, don't <laughs> Don't miss this. If you want to play games with God, just know this. You're going to reap for playing games, and there isn't a good reward for playing games. Amen. Let's look at some expressions about this, about um, God being a rewarder. There's considerable said about this. Now, we'll note... Some of the texts I mentioned that are in the old scriptures, most of them are rewarding the evildoer. Most all of them are like that. But that's because sin hadn't been put away yet. So that's, that's how, he, how he talked. Psalm 31, 23. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his servants. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully, plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. To love the Lord. The proud doer, that's someone who doesn't love the Lord, but just puts on a show that you could maybe televise. That really it doesn't exhibit a love for the Lord, it just is a means of raising money or whatever. Remember now, God is a rewarder of the proud doer. Payday is coming. Proverbs 26.10, the great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. Now, fools and transgressors, they think they're getting by. But when I was in the category, I thought I was yeah. getting by too. Yeah. I think God found out I wasn't. Hebrews 11.6, he makes a, more of a new covenant type statement about the situation. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. I know you know this, but I've got to say it anyway. There are great hosts of professing Christian people who don't believe that. Say, how do you know? Because they're not diligently. Yeah, amen. They're blowing hot and cold yeah. all the time. They're in and out, up and down, on and off. They're not diligent in their pursuit. They don't seek till they find. They don't ask till they get an answer. They're uh, a pretentious. He's a rewarder. It's a fun, you can't even come to God if you don't believe this. You can't even come to God. He won't even listen to what you say. Yeah. If you pray, it just will bounce off the ceiling and come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got to believe he is. Yeah. Not that there's a supreme being someplace in the sky. I mean, it's not that. Mm -hmm. yeah. He exists as he has presented himself. Amen. I believe he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, the modern church, uh, it needs a good dose of this. Yes, amen. needs a real good dose of this. It would, it would transform uh, the face of Christianity if this suddenly a revival broke out of believing that God is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There'd be all kind of Christian activities that would stop yeah. and there'd be all kind of new ones that start. Yeah. You see what I'm showing you? This, we're dealing with God's nature. Now there are many expressions of this, um, of God actually rewarding. He's teaching us. See, these, these expressions are designed to teach us because man by nature will not arrive at this conclusion. 
I, I irrespective, uh, disrespectfully dedicate this to all nature lovers. You can go out and study nature and you'll never come to this conclusion. But here's a revealed conclusion. Here's Job. Now Job was lived before the law. He was thought to be a contemporary or near contemporary of Abraham. So he's living like early in human history. No Bible, no law, very little revelation from God. Job 21, 17 to 19. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributed sorrows in his anger. They are like stubble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carries away. God layeth up his iniquity for his children. He rewardeth them, and he shall know it. His children... It's not God's children. It's the children of the wicked. Wicked people, to some extent, pass on their wickedness. Under the law, it said that God visited iniquity upon the children to the third and fourth generation. It thought there's, there's a mercy, God's merciful in, in this, but this is teach about God. He stores up. That's the reward he's talking about. The rewards God gives are on an accrual basis. They're accrued. Like you put it in a savings account, and it accrues. That's how God's rewards are. He doesn't just, as soon as you do it, do a lot of rewards. That isn't the way it works. It's stored up. They saw that in Job's day. Here's a, a one of David's expressions. This is something he said after he was delivered from Saul. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. How about that? That's in the Bible. Yeah, uh -huh. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, that he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. You say, whoa, I don't think I could say that. Well, David lived before Christ, and he could say it. Why can't you say Amen. it? Amen. You've got... There's been provision for forgiveness of sins. There's been prov provision for remission of sin. There's a provision to cleanse the conscience. There's a, con there's a provision to have clean hands. There's no reason why you can't say this. It'll take some effort. And when you get done, you're not going to praise yourself. You'll give thanks to God. But this it's a reward, see? It's a reward. Here's Psalm 31, 23. O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. You know, you don't, if you've been wronged, like who hasn't? <laughs> you, you've got your hard luck story. We've all, we've all got some of these. We don't have to vindicate ourselves. The Lord's going to plentifully reward the proud doer. I mean, <laughs> it'd be merciful if we were the ones that exercise the vindication. But God is going to reward Sam Point I'm making is that God's a rewarder. Amen. Proverbs thirteen thirteen. Who, that's God, despises the word whoever despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment, well, what about him? He shall be rewarded. Amen. Uh, <laughs> talk about grace, brethren. You mean you're rewarded for fearing the commandment? That's what it says. Amen. He that fears the commandment, that is, is afraid to break it, mm -hmm. yeah. afraid not to pay attention to it. God reward. Amen. God has a reward for somebody like that. Proverbs 26.10, the great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. Now remember, every, every life is headed toward a certain direction. There's a certain accrual of reward that's attached to every word, every deed, every thought, every purpose. There's, there's a reward connected with that, either a, a reward to the evildoer or a reward to the righteous doer. Every deed, say even a cup of cold water, there's a reward. 
in the name of a disciple is as a reward. There's wages, there's certain certain wages associated with that. Now as a boy, of course a nickel was a big denomination of money when I was a boy. Go to a candy store, get five cents worth of candy, be a bag full. But I'd get certain my allowance, and I'd get so much for mowing the lawn, I'd get so much for chopping corn, the suckers off of corn. And, but the, each job I did had a little yeah. wage connected with it. Yeah. You mowed the lawn, you made a little bit more than if you cleaned your bedroom. You know? <laughs> There's wages for everything you do. Amen. Amen. There is. There's a sense in which uh, you don't have to worry about people that have something coming that did bad things. Let's say someone killed your child like they did in Egypt. Well, what should be your attitude about that? It's actually covered in the prophets. <laughs> Jeremiah 31, 16, Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping, thine eyes from tears. And you read the context, he's talking about these children that were. For thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, for they, that's these children, shall come again from the land of the enemy. All those babies. Amen. Pharaoh killed all those babies. Herod killed all those slaughters. Mm -hmm. They're coming back from the land of the enemy. That's the land of death, and there'll be rewards, rewards handed out. Now, sometimes you get, sometimes there's a, a reward, preliminary reward here, both for the righteous and for the unrighteous. Paul talked about it in 1 Timothy 5, 24, 25. Now, remember, I'm establishing the fact that God's a rewarder. This is God's nature. 1 Timothy 5, 24 and 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before the judgment. So, Ananias, the fire would die, Herod dies, see? Some, some sins are like that. And some men, they follow after that. They don't get, they don't get punished until after they die. Likewise, also, the good works of some are manifested beforehand. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. So sometimes the Lord will give you a little elixir of comfort, like a reward, for now. Kind of keep you going. But the, the big reward's coming at the end. In kingdom matters, every man's work, what kind of work it was, what, what did it accomplish, what did what they do accomplish? Now, again, with some degree of disrespect, I dedicate this to gamers. You waste and squander time playing games. How's that going to shape up on the Day of Judgment? What good thing came from that? Well, you say, I got some relaxation. That's what it was. Well, there's better forms. I won't say any more because I don't intend to judge people about that, but you got to judge yourself about it. Yeah. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And fire is God's wrath and indignation. Our God is a consuming fire. That's a, is that a statement in Scripture? Our God is a consuming fire. That's what he is. So you and all you did is going to pass through that fire, and whatever isn't good is going to be burned up, whether it's you or what you did. That's the rewards. See, I'm talking about rewards. Hebrews 11.25 says of Moses choosing rather he chose. To suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Why did he do that? He had, he had a remembrance of the just recompense uh -huh. of sin. He, he knew what the consequences of sin were. Yeah. And it wasn't worth investing a life in it. 
So you see, God is a rewarder. Scriptures speak about it. Either from this standpoint, the day, day of Christ's coming is payday. Yeah, Every man's going to be paid. For those that have labored for God, lived by faith, took it, taken advantage of his salvation, trusted in his son, however you want to view it, you'll sure be glad you did. Yes, amen. There's a song we sing, it'll be worth it all, and we see Jesus. See, sometimes now it doesn't look like it's worth the inconvenience and that's maybe sometimes hatred and opposition, and it doesn't look like it's worth it. But let me assure you, it is. It is worth it because the wages are all piling up to the end. Right. <coughs> now, always remember this. Salvation is by grace. Yeah. Judgment is according to works. Yeah, right. You're not going to be judged according to grace. You're going to be judged according to works. Now, this is consistent. There's no variation of this at all. Mm -hmm. Salvation is by grace. Judgment's according to works. All right, now you should be a good spiritual mathematician and be able to calculate this out. What this means is that grace changes what you do. Amen. Yeah. That's why you can say that. Mm -hmm. I've got no objections to this. I trust you don't either. Be judged according to works because salvation he addresses this thing of works. Uh -huh. it, it addresses it. Right. And, and it's pleasant. It makes, it makes good, good works are pleasant. To be desired, you'll be more satisfied when you do good. Do yeah. good. You know why you're doing good. God gave you grace to do, it, but it's so that you'll be ready, see, for this, mm -hmm. for this day. Now think how much is said about this judgment according to works. There should be no question about this. If this makes you uncomfortable, it calm your spirit down and ask God for some grace and some peace and get your spirit settled because. This is good news to people that trust God. Amen. There's no need for this to foment fear in anybody unless they're not living right. And if they aren't living right, then there's this option to live right. Amen. And he would say it's too hard. Grace can equip you to do this. Amen. Salvation equips you to do this. It takes care of the past so it doesn't hound you. It strengthens you for the present, and it gives you pleasant incentives. See, so it it you can you're, you God can make you equal to this. Psalm sixty two twelve says, "Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work." Yeah. Here's Proverbs twenty four twelve. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth he not ponder the heart? He that pondereth the heart consider it. He that keepeth thy soul doth he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Solomon knew this. Yeah. Ecclesiastes, even the book of Ecclesiastes addresses this. For God shall bring every evil work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Amen. Going to happen. Yeah. Solomon taught his son. He said, it's interesting, Solomon only had one child. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Or maybe you haven't thought about that, but... What a sunny head, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and the book of Proverbs is just talking to his son. Mm -hmm. He told him, said, just enjoy life. Just throw yourself into it. Do whatever you want. But know this. Mm -hmm. Every work will be brought into judgment. Right. You just teach your children this. Make sure you teach your children this. Look, we, we want you to do what's right. But if you want to be stubborn about it and just seek your own will. And children, when they're young, they're self-centered. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're born that way. Right. Self-centered. They cry. Everything's about them. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, little babies. It's, the only thing that upsets them is something that concerns them. I, yeah. Always. This is the way it is. Uh -huh. You should teach the children. Teach your children. Look. There's, there's some place my ability kind of runs out. Uh -huh. yeah. I can't make you do right all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. But I can tell you yes. to know this, that whatever you do, payday is coming. Amen. You can't escape it. Just inform them of this, and, and then uh, God can work with them Amen. to correct this. 
Jeremiah 17, 10, here's the Lord now. I, the Lord, search the heart. <laughs> I try the reins. Uh, that word means kidneys, which doesn't really help us in very much. The idea is there's a, there's a composition to the soul like there's a composition to your body. There's a part of your soul that's more, more critical to the maintenance of life than other, the others. So he'll, he'll address the bowels, he'll, he'll the, the, your bowels. It's, it's the bowels of your soul. So there's a composition of the soul. He says, uh, I search the heart, I try the reins, the, the secret cogitations you have, uh, things you think about when nobody's around. The Lord says, now I, I investigate those. Oh, is that, is that right, Lord? You, I mean, you look into these things I've been having? Yeah. I investigate them. First thing I'm going to find out is whether you wanted to think that or it was a temptation. Critical distinction there. Yes, amen. You yeah. can do something with a temptation. You can reject it, see? Yeah. To give, I'm going, I search the heart, I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, see? Mm -hmm. So your life is like a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Got many different limbs. Yeah. And it's, it's growing some fruit. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm going to, I'm going to take that fruit and give it to you at the end. Jeremiah 32, 19. Great in, great in counsel, God, and mighty in work. Thine eyes are open upon the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. There it is again. See, God works. Matthew 16, 27. The Son of Man shall come in all the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his deeds. Romans 2, 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5, 10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body, whether they are good or whether they are evil, good or bad. See? The point is made. There's no, there's no reason for someone to miss this. Second Corinthians eleven fifteen. Therefore, is no great thing if his Satan's ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. New Revelation two twenty three. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am He which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. That's to the church. I say that's to the church. You got ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches? That's what he said. Amen. Boy, that's a hard, uh, hard saying. Revelation 20, verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. There it is again. Now, this is how this affects me. I, I want to pay close attention to my works. What am I doing? What am I thinking? What am I purposing? What am I saying? Because God, this is his nature now. He's going to give every man according as his works. Because the works tell you what he is. The works tell you what you are. Amen. Now this, uh, just according to works, this opens up what laying up treasures in heaven, what this means. <laughs> Jesus said, lay down up for yourselves treasures on earth. That's in the original too. It says that in the Greek and in the English too. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, or moss and rust, thus corrupt, and thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Well, how, how do you do that? You don't mail a dollar to heaven. I mean, it's obvious. That's obvious. How do you lay up treasures in heaven? By your works, which have this logical 
conclusion. See, every deed has a logical payment. It's just like with a logical payment. So you're accru accruing wages. There are some people, and you get higher up. I didn't get this high, but I got up high where you weren't paid frequently. But when you were, you get this big chunk of money when you did get paid. This is what God does. You get, you're going to get it, the big chunk of payment at the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to be a tremendous payment. Why? Because what he gives, you can't spend it in the world. Yeah. See, the wages God pays for good, for good deeds, you can't use them in this world, but you can in the next. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how far to carry that out. I have no idea, but I think more is involved possibly than meets the eye. So where, where are you laying up treasures? What kind of an investment account do you think you have? So you've got, uh, you got this job. Some people's job work a lot of hours every day. 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. They don't have much time left over. But you, you got this job, I was really blessed. I got this job, I worked six, six hours. Six hours, I said, boy, that's something. That... But what do, you, what do you do with those extra hours? See, you're invested in something. That's right. Whatever you do with them, there's a reward connected with it. That's right. Whatever it is. Or if you just have a little time left over at the end of the day, what do you what do you use it for? What kind of investment are you making with your time? What kind of investment are you? Making? He's told he's going to judge you according to your works. Yeah. That's been made quite crystal clear. Yeah. Where are you laying up treasures? What? Who are you banking on paying you? Satan will promise he can pay you. Oh, I'll give you this. I'll give yeah. you that. Uh -huh. But he he won't. God does. And I like this question. Mark has it. Luke has it too. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Well, that's a good question to answer. So what if you did get a letter from Bill Gates or Warren Buffett and they said, I have deposited, you know, five billion. Took a little off the top. What would you do with it? Huh? It's a blessing that most of us don't have a lot of money. Yeah, right. yeah. it's, it's a hard thing to handle. Uh -huh. Some people, it's their demise. Yeah. God he uses it, he stores it up until you're in a position where you can handle it. Yeah. He calls it true riches. Right. True riches. Yeah. Or being rich toward God. Yeah. See, when you, get to, when you get to heaven, if you make it, what are you going to have there when you get there? You think he's like every guy's going to sit on a cloud and be given a harp and float around and play and strum the harp and sing praise music? So what are you going to have when you get there? The apostles, they're going to be foundations. They're going to be sit on 12 thrones. Judging the 12 tribes. <laughs> Everyone's going to have something to do, That's right. but they will have invested down here. So when Jesus comes, I'm bringing my reward with me. I'm bringing it. Yeah. I've, I'm going to check the books. There's a set of books, and there's the book of life, and they're coordinated. Amen. Whoever has their name written in the book of life, they're in. That's it. But the book, books where the works are written will perfectly coordinate with the book of life. And they'll receive, well, the Lord will say something, I'm going to give you ten cities. Yeah, you are faithful over a few things, a few things, handful of money. But I'm going to, it's wages. See, wages are cruel exponentially in the other world. Ten cities for you. Yeah. Well, you didn't have much to start with. I'll give you five. Five cities. 
I want to encourage you to live your life banking when on the fact that when Jesus comes, he's bringing his reward with him. Amen. There's some way in which I think we'll know it instantly, but it's we're dealing in areas here we don't have a lot of understanding in. But we're going to, there's going to be good reason why we're going to be shouting and praising God. Yes. <laughs> Not only would we be glad to see him, we've lived for him. Mm. Laid down our lives for him. Yeah. Then we'll see him. He's going to be everything and more that we thought. Then he's going to be holding this, holding this reward. And yeah. imagine that your new name will be on that. Yeah. This is for Brother Exhorter. And heaven's going to kick off with a big uh, triumphant cry. Now, uh, the Lord has told us all this. He's told us what his objective in salvation is, what he's doing. He's just not getting you out of the furnace. Amen. In fact, salvation, in a sense, puts you in a furnace. In a sense. So the stuff that can't enter heaven gets burned out of you here. That's the aim. That's one aim. The aim is twofold. First of all, lay up treasures in heaven. Second of all, get the stuff out of you that can't transport over into the next world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's, a, that's a big assignment, brethren. Yeah. It's doable. You can't do it all at once. Now you're going to have to do it on a, on a daily uh, uh-huh. investment program. <laughs> Amen. So that's why Jesus taught you to pray about daily and give us this day our daily bread and Forgive us today our trespasses. You know, lead us not into temptation. That's all on a daily. So this is an installment plan. That's right. But if you take Jesus seriously, there's no question about this. If you take Jesus seriously, he'll praise you. Yes, that's right. And he'll give you, he'll say something like, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. Um, here's a crown for you. I'm going to give you this stone with a name, and you, only you really know it. But that name's going to tell us what you did when you were in the world. And then my reward, you're going to be able to correlate my reward with what you did. And we're going to start out with a whole lot of rejoicing, praise the Lord. Amen.